In this video, we're going to introduce temperature. So what is temperature? You're probably familiar with temperature already. You know there's a temperature that defines how hot or cold it is outside. And that's basically what the definition of temperature is. It's a way to quantify uh, how hot or how cold an object is. And this is a manifestation of what's known as thermal energy. And so thermal energy is basically the transfer of heat from one uh, system to another. And so this manifestation of thermal energy uh, manifests itself as something either being hot or cold. And temperature is a way to quantify how hot or cold something is. Now, there are three major temperature scales that are widely used um, throughout society broadly. Uh, that's the Fahrenheit scale, the Celsius scale, and the Kelvin scale. Now, in the physical sciences, the Celsius and Kelvin scales are primarily used uh, in the physical sciences. And Fahrenheit is used a lot in popular society. You see a lot of, um, the, a lot of times the temperature outside is reported in Fahrenheit. And so the purpose of this video and what I really wanna do is to be able to show how to convert between these three different temperature scales, right? And just explain how they get the values that they have in these temperature scales. So, um, so let's start with Celsius, right? So what I've shown here are three different thermometers. Um, basically, these thermometers are at about the freezing temperature of water. You can see that the, the mercury level that I've drawn here is stopping at about the freezing temperature of water. And for the Celsius scale, this would be zero degrees Celsius. This is because the Celsius scale uses the freezing point of pure water as its reference point. So that's where it starts is at zero degrees Celsius uh, right at the freezing point of water. Now, Fahrenheit was uh, calibrated based on a, a mixture of water that wasn't so pure. It's like water salt type of mixture. Um, and so that it's zero point is the freezing point of that mixture. So the freezing point of pure water on the Fahrenheit scale is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in the Kelvin scale, the zero point is what's known as absolute zero. So absolute zero is zero Kelvin. Right. And we use the the letter K after the the number to denote Kelvin. So zero Kelvin is absolute zero. Now, absolute zero is the temperature at which all molecular motion would stop. Right. This is the lowest possible temperature you can get to It's a theoretical zero temperature where all molecular motion stops. So uh, absolute zero is used for the Kelvin scale. And this is a very popular temperature in physical sciences because since the zero point is the lowest conceivable temperature, there are no negative numbers here, right? Um, so whereas with the Celsius and Fahrenheit scale, you could easily get negative numbers. You've seen, you know, if you uh, live in a very, very cold place, you might have woken up one morning and seen that um, the the temperature is zero, negative um, something degrees Fahrenheit, negative five, negative six, or what have you, right? So uh, the absolute zero, uh, the Kelvin scale is really popular because you don't get these negative numbers. So now how do we convert between these different temperature scales? So the two things that you'll need to know to, uh, to t convert between these temperature scales are one being the zero point, right? How do we account for a difference in zero point between the two scales? And the second is the range of numbers. Right. So how fast or slow do they increase? Do they increase at the same rate? Um, you know, what's the difference between the range of these numbers? And so that's why on these three thermometers, I've marked the freezing and boiling points of water. So let's let's look at the Celsius and Kelvin scales first, since I, I believe that their conversion is is the easiest one to understand. Right. So let's say that we have our temperature here in Celsius. Right. We know that zero degrees Celsius corresponds to 273 Kelvin, right? Now, when we look at the boiling point, what we notice is that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius higher than the freezing point, 
right? It's also 100 Kelvin higher than the freezing point, right? So that means that this range is exactly the same. 100 Celsius is equal to 100 Kelvin. And so the only thing that we have to account for here is the difference between the zero points, right? So if we want to get a temperature in Kelvin, uh, basically in order to convert, right? So a temperature, a temperature in Celsius, right? So I'll use T sub C for the temperature in Celsius. That's going to be equal to the temperature in Kelvin plus or minus 273. Right, so basically if you wanted to convert to uh, Celsius, all you have to do is subtract by 273, right? So if we want 273 Kelvin converted to Celsius, we just subtract 273. And obviously if you wanted to do the other conversion to Kelvin, right, all you would do is do algebra here to rearrange this equation. So you will have the temperature in Celsius plus 273. And oftentimes we actually use um, a decimal. So we use, be more specific, is 273.15. So we can include that here as well. So 273.15. Okay, so, uh, so since this range is exactly the same, um, all we have to do is account for the difference in the zero point. So we just add or subtract 273.15 in order to convert freely from Celsius to Kelvin. Now let's look at the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit, right? So this one's going to be a little bit more involved because you'll notice that uh, not only is the zero point different, right? So we zero Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but this range is also different. So the boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's gonna be more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So this range is different and the zero point is different, right? So it, our starting point here is what we do notice is that there is a proportionality between these guys. So as the temperature in Celsius increases, the temperature in Fahrenheit increases as well, right? So we know that they're directly proportional. So we know that there's some, let me choose a different color here. We know that there's some direct proportionality between the temperature in Fahrenheit and the temperature in Celsius. So this symbol in the middle is just stands for proportionality. So we know that there's some proportionality, which means we can get an equation to convert between the two. So um, if, we, if we're thinking about the temperature in Fahrenheit, right, we know that the zero point is off by 32. So we know what the first thing we'll have to do is definitely add 32. So let's do that first. So the temperature in Fahrenheit, we know is going to be, part of it is going to be the temperature in Celsius plus 32 to give you the, the degrees in Fahrenheit, right? So this would automatically give you the um, this temperature for the freezing point of water since it's zero degrees Celsius. This gives you the 32. Now the next thing that we have to consider is the difference in the range, which what we can do with thinking about it from a dimensional analysis standpoint is basically set up a conversion factor in order to convert, right? So I'll, I'll add units here so that we can, we can see how this conversion factor would work in practice. So let's look at this range for, from the, between the freezing and boiling point of water in Celsius and in Fahrenheit. So in degrees Celsius, we have 100 degrees Celsius minus zero degrees Celsius, right? That's the difference between the freezing and boiling point, right? That's gonna be 100 degrees C. And the difference between these same values in degrees Fahrenheit, right, is gonna be 212 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit that's going to give us a difference of 180 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Now, keep in mind, this is the same range between freezing and boiling of water. They're just quantified differently. So what we can say, we can set up a conversion factor where we say that 180 degrees Fahrenheit for every 180 degrees Fahrenheit, 
there's 100 degrees Celsius, right? And obviously you can um, simplify this fraction so that you get, you know, for every nine degrees Fahrenheit, there's five degrees Celsius, right? So this gives us a conversion factor that we can put into this equation in order to get a, a conversion equation from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So let's do it. So using this conversion factor, now we have the full equation that converts Fahrenheit to Celsius. So we'll have the temperature in Fahrenheit is going to be equal to the temperature in Celsius times 9 over 5, right, for 9 degrees Fahrenheit for every 9 degrees C plus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So basically what we have here. So this TC is our Celsius temperature. Right. So this is our temperature in Celsius. This nine over five is our conversion factor. And then the 32 is accounting for the zero point. Right. The difference between the zero point in the two scales. Right. So this is using dimensional analysis in order to get. Um, a in-depth equation in order to convert the two temperatures. So this is how you convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And I know you've probably seen this equation before, but I wanted to make sure that you understood exactly where this equation comes from, right? Okay, so let's look at an example problem of doing conversions. So this problem says the average daytime temperature on Earth and Jupiter are 72 degrees Fahrenheit and 313 Kelvin, respectively. Calculate the difference in temperature in degrees C between these two planets, right? So basically what you have here, you're given the, the temperature on these two planets in two different uh, temperature scales, and you're asked to get the difference in another temperature scale, right? So you can approach this problem in different ways. The way that I'm going to choose to approach it is to convert the temperatures for each planet to Celsius and then subtract them. And that would give me the temperature difference uh, between the two planets. So first let's convert that uh, Jupiter temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius, right? So we have our equation for the temperature for Fahrenheit, right? We got TC times nine over five, right? Plus 32. Right, that's the equation that we saw on the previous slide for converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now, what we want to do um, is, or this is for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, we want to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. So what we're gonna have to do is do a little bit of algebra. So what we wanna do here is isolate this TC algebraically so that we can convert from Celsius, uh, from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So if we just subtract on both sides by 32, we end up with TF minus 32, right? What's left on the left-hand side is TC times nine over five. Then from there, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this nine over five to get your final answer. So you're gonna end up with five over nine times TF minus 32 is going to give you the temperature in Celsius, right? So now all we have to do is plug and chug to get our Celsius temperature, right? So TC is going to be equal to five over nine times our Fahrenheit temperature here is 72 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32, right? So what you end up with as a Celsius temperature is 22 degrees C. Right, so this gives you your temperature in degrees Celsius for Jupiter. Now, the other temperature that we need to convert is the temperature for um, is the temperature for Jupiter, right? So, or the temp that was the temperature on Earth, and now this is the temperature for Jupiter. So, Jupiter's three hundred and thirteen Kelvin. So, all we have to do is just plug into our equation that we saw on the last slide. So, we have TC is equal to TK minus 273.15. So our temperature in Celsius, we'll plug in our temperature, 313 
minus 273.15. So that's going to give us a Celsius temperature of 40 degrees C. Right, so that's our temperature on the other planet, on Jupiter. Now we just have to take the difference between the two in order to get our final answer. So our delta T, so delta just stands for difference, right? So our difference in temperature is going to be 40 degrees C minus 22 degrees C. That's going to give us a delta T of 18 degrees C, right? Answering our question. Okay, so this was just a general introduction into temperature, the three different temperature scales that are in wide use in the physical sciences. So hopefully you have a better understanding of these three temperature scales and how we convert between the three using dimensional analysis.